Hey there everyone, this is Taylor Parks from Parks Performance. Uh, today I'd like to just start off my maintenance section of my YouTube channel by going over one of the easiest areas of car maintenance, and that is how to change your own oil. For today's example, we'll be using a 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited with the Pentastar V6, which is 3.6 liters. Now one of the first things you want to do before preparing to do your oil change, after you've already made sure that you've had all of your uh, parts and tools ready for your oil change, is to make sure that the engine's nice and warmed up. It's currently in about 20 degrees out here in uh, rural Pennsylvania in January. And so the first thing I'm going to do is drive the Jeep around to get its engine nice and warm. Now in driving your vehicle, you don't have to drive for that long a period of time. Just enough for your vehicle to get up to normal operating temperature. For vehicles with a temperature gauge, once your uh, gauge stops moving at a relatively steady temperature, you're good to bring the vehicle back in and actually begin your oil change. If for some reason your vehicle doesn't have a temperature gauge, Usually ballpark probably 15 to 20 minutes, it should be plenty enough driving to get the engine up to operating temperature. So I took the Jeep out for a quick spin, got it all warmed up, and now we can begin our oil change. First you want to do is find your oil fill cap. This will be somewhere on the top of your engine most likely. On here on the Jeep it is on the driver's side, and it's clearly marked by engine oil on the cap. So just want to unscrew that and take it out. Now the reason we're doing this is as you drain the oil out of the bottom of the engine, you're going to create a vacuum. This can make it slow for the oil to come out. Kind of sort of when you pour a bottle out all the way and it starts to gurgle. So by opening this cap, we can allow air to go in as the oil comes out. This will make the oil drain faster and make our oil change easier. Before beginning your project, you obviously need to make sure that you have the proper tools available and parts. Obviously for an oil change, you need oil. Uh, Jeep Wrangler runs on 5W20 motor oil. I'm a Mobile One fan myself, so I purchased Mobile One oil. STP filters were the only one available in my area due to a lack of supply recently. And so I picked up an STP filter. It's interesting to note that if you've ever changed your oil before, the Jeep uses a cartridge filter, which is a little bit different than your stereotypical spin-on filter. Finally, you need a way to secure the oil. I ran out to my local Harbor Freight, picked up a waste oil storage container. You just simply slide this under the car when you drain the oil. It makes it uh, easy to dispose of and deal with. However, you got a bucket, anything else, that's fine too. That said, be sure when you're done changing your oil that you put it back into a used container somehow and drop it at your local waste disposal area. So now you got the vehicle parked, ready to go. You got the fill cap off, you're ready to drain your oil. On the Jeeps, this will be. Uh, a little bit right behind the front axle underneath the vehicle. Obviously right here you can see this black plug, that's your drain plug. Just gotta take that out with a socket and wrench and you're ready to go. Uh, I measured it up, it seems to be that is a 13 millimeter bolt. Um, just an FYI, almost all the bolts on a car are metric, just for those who are starting out in their car careers. And anyway, what you want to do now is simply take that off, make sure you got your fill container underneath it and drain it out. Jeeps sit high enough, fortunately you can just crawl underneath them to do this. Make sure that you have the parking brake set, the vehicle in gear, and it's on a level surface so it can't roll back and kill you. Um, on any other smaller vehicles like a car, obviously, you're probably going to have to jack the vehicle up. So take extra care and precaution when doing something like that. So while the oil is draining out now from underneath, we can proceed to remove the oil filter and change that up above. So coming back over to the top of the Jeep, you first want to lift your engine cover off. This simply just pops upward and off, and you can slide it right out. You can see there in the back there are the hinges it pivots on, and there are the pop tabs that lock it down in the front. So you simply just lift up, pop it out of those front tabs, then pop it forward to pop it out of the rear tabs. From here now, we can see our oil filter. Oil filter is this little black canister right here. This is where you're going to put your inline filter, this STP one I showed you earlier. So just feel free to grab a wrench and pop that off. Again, be careful with tightening and loosening this. It's simply plastic, so you don't need to get overly aggressive with it. So now I can simply proceed to take off the top of the filter cap, filter housing cap. I didn't have a metric size wrench large enough, so since it's just plastic and light, I found the closest standard equivalent and used that. Though if you have the metric size, I definitely recommend using that instead. Here you can now see the filter housing the old filter and the housing. You can see here the cartridge doesn't look too bad on this example but uh, anyway it's very simple to remove so all you do is while you grab a rag grab the cartridge filter 
it simply has that same push tab on side and it'll pop right out. So simply pull it right out and swap in your new filter. As I said earlier, the inline filter simply pops out of little pop tabs in the middle from the filter housing. So all you do now is take your new filter, remove from the housing, notice the slight dimples around here within the inside, and that simply slides down in and over into the filter housing, and you'll feel it pop in as you press it. pops in nice and sturdy like that. You can now proceed to thread the filter housing cap back in and then tighten it gently until it's snug with a wrench. So, simply just place it back in, drop it in there. Be sure to start threading it by hand. The last thing you want to do is cross thread it and uh, destroy the threads with a wrench going all uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger on it. So as we can see here, the oil is mostly trickled out. There's just a very slight amount still coming out. Uh, at this point, I'd say we've drained the oil that we cared to. I'll put the oil drain screw back in. Again, you always want to start threading these in by hand. Make sure you don't cross-thread it and destroys anything before tightening. Now again, some fresh oil. Be sure to reference your user guide to see how much oil capacity your engine takes. If you're worried about overfilling or underfilling the engine, be sure to use the dipstick to continually check your oil while you fill it. Make sure you get the right amount. So I've closed the hood to the Jeep, and now I can show you how to reset your uh, oil change light. So, take the key, place it in the ignition, turn it to the on position, but do not start the vehicle. You'll see here I have the oil change required light coming on. So what you need to do is when you put the key in and turn it to the on position, you need to slowly press the gas pedal three times in a row, and then shut the key, turn the key back off. When you turn it back on, the oil change light should go out. So let's try that. Since I've already been past my 10 seconds, I'll take the key out and try it again. Key in to the on position. Press the gas once, twice, three times. Turn the key off. Take it out. Now I'll put the key back in. Turn it to the on position. And notice now we have no oil change light. Going through the menu, you can now see we have 100% oil life remaining. Now there you go, you've now fully changed oil in your Jeep. Congratulations and welcome to the world of wrenching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and uh, stay put tuned. Hope to do some more videos on maintenance and a lot of modifications since hot rodding is actually my main passion and hobby. So thanks for watching. Best of luck with your work.